Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Bert Dick, Managing Director of Membership of the National Space Society. And on behalf of my colleague, Larry Ahern, Vice President of Chapters, I'd like to welcome you to our Space Forum this evening, From Fashion to Space, an Artist Adventure, a conversation with James Vaughn. So uh, you're in for a, a great treat, a lot of visual stimulation tonight as we see some of the great artwork. So we'll talk more about that in just a minute. I'm just gonna start off with our preliminaries. So again, welcome to our virtual space forum. We certainly appreciate all the support you've given us uh, over the last few years as we've done these space forums and town halls. So thank you for that. Uh, the agenda for the evening, we'll do a quick virtual etiquette, a few NSS announcements, then I'll share some upcoming space forums and town halls and then we'll get right into the program for you. Uh, as always with the questions, uh, it's probably best to submit them using the Q&A function. Uh, those are seen by the panelists directly and it's a lot easier to pick the questions out, but you are very welcome to use the chat as well. Uh, I only ask that you be respectful of all the panelists and the audience uh, because everyone can see that. Uh, but feel free to do both. We did get a number of questions that were submitted and I've sent those off to uh, our speaker and moderator for tonight. And, but feel free to ask additional questions as we go through the program. As always, I do like to give a, an appeal to give to our cause. If you're enjoying the space forums and town halls, please feel free to donate to support the National Space Society. Uh, we really appreciate all the donations we've received. Uh, it really helps us carry out our mission. Uh, I will post the link uh, in the chat so you have that uh, throughout the evening. A couple things coming up. I mentioned these during our last uh, Space Forum. We've got the Space Settlement Summit coming up uh, on Thursday and Friday, November 10th and 11th uh, in Los Angeles at the Sheraton Gateway. Uh, it is a great, uh, a great event, uh, a number of great subject matter experts on space settlement, speakers and panels. Uh, so we're looking forward to a, a really informative session there. Uh, and also on the evening of the 11th, we've got a Dr Dare to Dream Gala. This is a fundraiser uh, to celebrate the new space age and all of the funds we raise will be there to support those interested in pursuing the dream of space flight and space settlement and space exploration. Uh, so again, both of those are at the Sheraton Gateway in Los Angeles. If you're gonna be in the area, we welcome you to join us. Uh, you can check those things out on the NSS website. Also, uh, please complete the post space forum survey. Uh, I do apologize, I found out from a number of you that uh, the last forum survey was not live when we closed out the last forum. So we did correct that, made sure it's up and running. Uh, so please take a few minutes to complete it. Uh, it's anonymous and it really does help us in terms of planning these future events. So what's coming up with our space forums? I shared these the last time around. Uh, we've got the Students for Exploration and Development of Space, SEDS, uh, they are going to be uh, at their Space Vision Conference in Chicago, uh, and that's going to be Thursday, November 10th, two weeks from tonight. Uh, we might change the time. They, they thought they needed to go a little earlier, but we'll let you know officially when the time is. Either it'll be the 8, 8 p.m. or in our regular 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, also, two weeks after that, or I'm sorry, a few weeks after that, uh, into December, uh, this will be our last space form of the year. Uh, it's, it's something we've been doing every year now. It's become an annual event. People are looking forward to it. Uh, it's the 2022 Space Year in Review with Larry Boyle and Jim Plaxico. So we're looking forward to that. And as I said, we're working on 2023 at this point. If you have ideas or even some speakers that might be interested in doing a space form for us, uh, let myself or Larry know, uh, and we'll, we can do all the legwork for you. No need for you to do any of that work. We can do all the follow-up and get everything lined up, but we do appreciate any ideas that you might have. 
So that's what's coming up. Now let's talk about this evening. And before I turn this over to our moderator, uh, and I know you're gonna be seeing a lot of the pictures uh, later. I just wanted to share a few of my favorites. Uh, <laughs> okay. And I, I know one there is in space, but I am a big uh, XB70 uh, fan. And I just love that, love that image. Uh, and of course the Webb Space Telescope there, which is a stamp. Uh, and you see Orion and Starship. Uh, so you're gonna see, you're gonna be really visually dazzled tonight. So looking forward to that. And uh, it's my pleasure uh, right now to introduce my NSS colleague, Rod Pyle, uh, the author, journalist, and editor in chief of our Ad Astra magazine. Uh, and he will be moderating the session tonight and will be introducing our guest speaker. So Rod, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you very much. And uh, just wanted to point out that I, I, in, in my world, the NSS takes full credit for that uh, web space telescope image becoming a stamp. <laughs> I think it actually may have happened before we put it on the cover, but I'm, I'm taking credit for it anyway, because I like holding that over Jim's head. So Jim Vaughn, uh, we met probably seven years ago, I think. At least seven years ago. Yeah, See, maybe eight. Seems it, like an eternity. Ah, <laughs> uh, the cosmic curmudgeon speaks. Yes. And we, uh, we started talking space art right away, and you had been doing it for a while, but your portfolio isn't anything like it is now. And I think what struck me so much was, uh, you know, you see a lot of photorealistic CGI space imagery. You see a lot of, of hand-drawn space art, of course, or hand-painted. But yours was a combination of some of the best of everything in terms of technique. And what really knocked me out from the very beginning, which is why I've been dragging you into every endeavor I've had since then, kicking and screaming, is that you're a consummate storyteller visually, which is not something that's common. Um, you know, there's there's a, a limited cadre of, of artists that, that really do that well. There's some wonderful space art out there. Don't get me wrong, I, I love it all. But there's a difference between depicting and messaging, I guess, is what I'd say. So before we uh, get too deeply into that, I thought uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your background, what you did coming up okay. in art and photography, <laughs> and what got you into not just doing space and aerospace art, but also doing photo illustration the way you do it and what that is. Uh-huh. Well, <clears throat> that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I have a kind of a varied background, a lot of it in art. I was a photographer in my degree, or, you know, I, I, I went to school for photojournalism and uh, did some time being a freelance photojournalist and then went on to doing studio photography, advertising, fashion, portrait work. Um, I grew up in a small town in Ohio and, and I'm back there now, but I was in Chicago for um, a long time, almost 30 years. So I have a, a, the background in the journalism and in the advertising probably, and just, I, I love stories and I love telling stories and um, you know, photography, the word means writing with light, photography. Um, and we are visual creatures. We get most of our information, human beings, from our eyes. And our eyes really are an extension of our brain and our mind and who we are. So when we're looking at something, a whole lot of things can be going on or not. Um and I try, try to take advantage of that. The light, the color, the feel, everything else is being instantly processed by our brains. And it's telling us a story, whether whether it's a good story, bad story, boring story, whatever. Um, it isn't like a sight arrives in some little funny little package uh, algorithm. You know, it, we use our brains, we use our minds, we use ourselves to see. And um, so I guess that's where I'm coming from. I mean, it's been something that, that I've been sort of involved in all, all of my life. I, I, uh, my mother was an artist and a poet and, and my dad was a, 
a director of research at Goodyear. So, so I'm kind of that merging of the two. Um, and uh, it's just been a, a kind of fun, delightful process. And uh, also, I want to point out, too, that because I was doing most of my photography work in in the old days um, in terms of analog and working in film with film dark rooms etc so i have have a real kind of hands-on um in the trenches dirty kind of uh uh experience with with initially with working with a photo medium and and that can make a difference too and i think it does although i i'm not really aware of it but but I think that is a difference, and it's it's mainly because I'm an old old uh, curmudgeon, like you said. Well said. Um, I'm going to bring up, if you don't mind, I'm going to bring up one of my favorite illustrations of yours that is not a space illustration. Uh, let me see if I could do this. Yes. Can you pull it up? I've got it here too. Yeah. Is everybody seeing that? I can see it. All right. So. This is a very powerful illustration. That's an ICBM nose cone, which in itself is pretty frightening. Um, but you didn't just put a ruler there to give it scale. You put a tricycle like one that we both had as little kids, complete with little streamers and the handlebars, which, uh, you know, it, it brings a whole, whole new depth of meaning to this illustration and what would otherwise be just a scary picture of a hydrogen bomb. Um, who was this for and how did, how did you conceive of this messaging? Well, um, it, it was not for any particular client. I, I do a lot of my work. Um, I don't know what you'd call it as, as practices spec as for my own portfolio. Um, and, and I think that to be really good at, uh, art, you need to do that. You need to you wouldn't expect a, a concert viol the greatest violinist in the world to to say well i only play the violin when people pay me right um you got to be doing it all the time and i love it so it's my favorite thing to do um anyway so this is an experiment let's put it this way um and uh it, i guess this is a good example of where a picture speaks for itself Yes, I'd say so. Yeah, and and that's that's also a, a truism I really believe in, is that that images like this, pictures that stay with us, um, they essentially have their own voice, and and it it's nice to think think that after I'm dead and gone in ashes, this picture will still be there and it'll still convey the same the same message. Along with the other, how many did we find aside you've done? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Over a thousand anyway. Uh, yeah, over. well, we're, we're talking about aerospace imagery. Um, I would say it's less than that because I, I was trying to point out that um, there's a lot of versions of things. I, yeah. That's another idiosyncrasy of, of being an artist is that you, you try this, you try that, and you're in love with all of them. So you got to date them all. So uh you, you know you can't throw them away um so you've been doing our covers for ad astra for well basically since i took over the magazine so it was 2017 um and they're very vivid as i keep saying they all tell stories but these are not i think a lot of people think they're cgi or they may think that it's pure painting and you you do kind of a unique form of art so why don't you talk about what photo illustration is and how it works uh okay um let's see i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up one of your covers right now can you see that i see yes there we go okay there we go three astronauts one of my favorites and what was the question i'm sorry um oh how how we do this illustration why is that what is photo illustration ah well it's a hybrid word and um it's come about really because of digital photography and uh, the merging of um, really Photoshop and um, photography. So I can, it, and it's a dream come true for me because it really is a merging of, of photography and illustration 
um, it, it gives me a lot more creative room and I can do a lot of what I guess would be called in the old days, retouching or special effects or all of the above. So um, I can more completely make a picture of what's going on in my imagination. And I can assemble different pieces and parts as needed, like a painter. So it's it's much more, um, it's, it's quite a bit like being a painter would be a good, a good example, at least in my case. So what were some of your seminal influences, if you were? We, we've talked about it a lot, but for the sake of, of the people listening right now, what influenced you in, in uh, your conceptual artwork in general and specifically for aerospace? Well, I, I really enjoyed the work of, of uh, Robert McCall. Um, mm. And there's a, an illustration he did, it's fairly famous for the, for the movie 2001. Right. And, and this was back during a period, his stuff was appearing regularly in Life magazine um, and other uh, all over the place. And, and this is from 1964 of the Saturn V, which was going to be, you know, happening, a thing to come. And it was very exciting. And so for a little kid, um, they just had a certain realism to, to it, but also uh, a lot of pizzazz and a lot of romance. Um, and so I, I would say that probably, and especially during the period where I was actually looking at magazines and uh, <clears throat> really excited about the space program, um, he, he was the guy who really stuck out. Um, you often mention Bonestell and, and his work um, was more before my time, but I've come to see how very much he, he influenced um, everything to come. And, and we're talking now about 1955 or so when these illustrations came out in uh, in Collier's magazine. Right. And, and I guess the emphasis here is also on something where we're talking about mass exposure. Uh, uh, everybody's seeing it. Everybody's learning about what might be in a space program. Because of course, the earlier picture, the Saturn V, that's, that's something that's going to happen. It's 1964 when I'm seeing it. Um, and this uh, would be dated even 1953 or 50, okay, 54, 1954. So um, we're looking at looking at what is to come, what is, uh, and um, with a a new sense of it not being fiction or not being science fiction, but being part of the exciting world that is expanding uh and growing and and mankind becoming a space faring um uh a space faring population uh we're going out into space for real uh, so that that that's two of the things that that influenced me uh in terms of I, th I think it's interesting because, I, like I said, I mentioned you you talk a lot. Or you, you your favorite illustrator is Bonestell, and mine is McCall. No, my and favorite it, illustrator is Vaughn. Uh, okay, it's just based <clears throat> to some extent on on McCall. <laughs> and, uh, and I, yeah, I kind of fed you that one, didn't I? Yeah. Um, but your interest in Bonestell made me go back and look at his work more closely and study his work more closely. So you'll probably see some more Bonestell influence um, uh, in my work now. And, and, and that's another thing is that any good artist is gonna be absorbing all kinds of things all the time. Uh, and, and every kind of picture, every kind of, you know, I love pictures, I always have. And, and uh, so that's part of how it all works. Does that answer the question? Yeah, and I just want to make a, a side point about this. This particular illustration I love. This is from Von Braun's book that he wrote while he was kind of sitting in exile out at White Sands, New Mexico, trying <laughs> to find things to do after the war. Um, he wrote Das Mars Project in German, which was published in German, I think, in 1947 or 49, and then published in English in 1952 or 53. 
and it was all about his you know a design for a fleet of spacecraft that would head to mars there was 10 of them four of them were gliders uh, you know the first one to land on skis on the north pole and then a bunch of hardy army soldiers actually <laughs> would, would jump into a tractor and drive down to the equator to build a landing strip for the rest of them it was very ambitious of course the the atmosphere is a lot thinner than we thought so they would have crashed but what i find most <laughs> uh, amusing about it is these were the the Mars project the book was actually the appendix of possibly the worst science fiction novel ever written called Mars a technical tale which was not <laughs> published until about 10 years ago that von Braun uh, did as an attempt at a novel and I did finally get my hands on it and it's virtually unreadable however the ruler of Mars is named the Elon I kid oh, you not no so you know Von I'll Braun see. was ahead of his time in so many ways. Anyway, that's an aside. Good old uh, Werner. That's his orbital shuttle there. And of course, there's the good doctor himself. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we've kind of touched on this, but but you talked about photojournalism and advertising. And, and I have a background more in advertising than, than, than photojournalism, but a little bit of both. How do you feel that plays into telling a story visually? And obviously, that was very formative for you. Well, I mean, I, I, that was my job. I mean, to go out with a with a camera and take pictures that told a story. Um, that's what photojournalism is, and and it um, takes advantage of of the power of of pictures and the old you know the old saying one, one picture is worth a thousand words. Right. Um, and also, uh, you know, I I must try to emphasize to people that that people human beings really do like pictures we process pictures much more quickly than we do like written words and that kind of thing um and so what i'm always trying to do for my clients or or yeah uh who i'm working for um is make something that's going to catch people's attention it's going to going to uh they're going to have to look at it they they become very interested in it and and from there then we can give them more information on the technical side or you know try, try to sell them on something so we can get tax dollars or, or whatever but it's it's an image um that that stops people and and grabs their imagination what's well, interesting you know you talk about photojournalism and photojournalism we might take 30 or 50 or 100 or more pictures to try and get that one that just really sells it right mm -hmm. famously the the girl uh, running uh, from the vietnam era is, is a famous right example right of that. one one picture out of thousands that guys took that that fella took on the other hand with what you're doing now you get to design the photojournalistic message right you don't have to sit around and wait for that perfect minute to happen right the perfect second. right <clears throat> you and get that, to put it together, which I think plays on your strengths as as an advertising fashion photographer. Uh, yeah, and that was a period where I was working with with people, subject matter, and and yes, you're exactly right. Where um, and I was still doing the same sort of storytelling, only a different sort of message or a different kind of of song, you could say. Yeah. um a different kind of a poem uh because pictures are not quite you know like a written story but they do sort of communicate in that kind of different like a poem maybe or something um you know i originally uh when i was doing the the commercial work uh was doing a lot of this sort of fun funny norman rockwell sort of illustrations um and and capturing that and, and then moving into the fashion more um it was still storytelling uh it was still a lot about um and and even the most sparse picture um it has a feeling has a place has a a mood has a a, a story um And and like this, it just can be riveting. And and of course the the characters, the the people involved, 
are there because they look particularly interesting and good in a photograph. And but beyond that, there was always a sense of of um, I'd often hear from people that a lot of the models in my fashion photography, people would say they look familiar. It looks like somebody I know. And and that was sort of part of the point was they there was a sort of universal appeal. Um, and then occasionally I still get to do something fun, which is kind of a crossover uh, <laughs> in this case, which is uh, uh, a science fiction book cover. And, uh, you know, and it's interesting working with digital because now she would be what we, what do we call an asset or what I, I, she's a stock photo. I did not photograph her. Right. But I, I went through hundreds of pictures looking for just the right um, character. And, and it's very hard for me. Some, it's hard for me to convince myself I didn't photograph her. Mm. Sometimes I, I, I make, I, you know, it's just strange. And, and so I guess I'm a victim of my own work. Uh, you know, and then you talk about um, illustration. Now, this is a great example of where uh, combining the photography and the illustration together and getting something unique. And I, I got to show this one because um, anyway, because it's, this is for American greetings and uh, it, it, it's just a, a wonderful Christmas message is, you know, I, I, I got a chance to do a weird Christmas uh, tribute and, and there it is. Okay. Uh we're uh, we're coming up on the half. Do you want to take a, a, a couple minute break? Yeah, and I'll I'll try to be showing more pictures after the okay. After and if the you break. don't mind, I'll I'll show a handful of them while you're. Uh, hey, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. I'm gonna unplug, unplug my uh, my headset here, and I should hear you over my my. Uh... Maybe it's a combination. It, it it is a combination. So usually I I try to pick you know, a couple of stories that are leads, often whatever John Cross has written, but sometimes others, and come up with a theme for that edition and to try and save money because, you know, we're always trying to save money with the NSS and, uh, you know, maximize the return on people's donations. I go through his existing work, which is copious. I mean, I've got folders of hundreds and hundreds of images and pick something that makes sense. And then I'll usually call them up and say, hey, like the, the one with the lunar cave a couple of issues ago, or maybe it was the last issue. Um, you know, he had, he had done that already, but it was dark inside the cave and there wasn't any infrastructure. And I said, can you add some infrastructure? And he said, no. <laughs> I said, what do you mean, no? He said, that, does, that doesn't make sense. Jim, I know you're hearing me, it's okay. And, uh, but we talked about it. He said, well, wait a minute, I've got an idea. So, you know, it gave us exactly what we wanted for a price. Um, you know, a real commission like this, if you go to the the top line aerospace artists of which Jim is one now, he's really broke into that about three or four years ago, you can be looking at ten, fifteen, twenty five thousand dollars for a commission. So he's been very good to the NSS. I don't want to give away his secrets, but let's say exponentially less. And um so usually we try and amend something he's already done, but but on occasion he does a, a custom commission for us, and we do have an art project that we'll be moving ahead with. We're going to get more of them, and we'll be talking to people like Jim and Pat Rawlings and others. By the way, I was talking to Pat, who's a wonderful guy. Uh, I think most people here know who Pat Rawlings is. He's in the Robert McCall class of, of illustrators from NASA's, uh, from, well, shuttle year forward. And... Uh, we got to chatting and he, he brought up Jim. And I said, oh, you know Jim Vaughn? He said, yeah. He said, I've been looking at your covers. He's really good. I, I like his work a lot. And I thought, oh man, I can't wait to tell Jim this. <laughs> Cause you know, when you get the pat on the back from 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 uh, Pat Rawlings, you know you're doing okay. Um, did you have any other questions? No, go ahead and show some uh, additional uh, images. That'd be great. Yeah, let's see. This one's This one's for you, brother. Uh, yo, yes, I'd love it. <laughs> Another angle. Um, that's the uh, XB70, right? That's the XB70, yep. Yeah. And there were, only, there were only two built, so it looks like they're both flying there. <laughs> yeah, well, and that, that's what Jim does. He maximizes assets. 
Um, here's a picture he did for Cassini. At, uh, excuse me, that's not Cassini. That, yes, that is Cassini. Right. Yeah. Um, which uh, I love. I do a, a book for JPL every year on 30 of their, you know, hottest, newest projects. And I've been trying to get them to uh, buy, to license more of Jim's illustrations. Uh, usually we have to use photographs, but wherever we can use illustrations, I try to use his wherever possible. Because, you know, there's a lot of good artwork on, on JPL's planetary robotic programs. But again, you know, some tell stories better than others. And, and I just love the way this sort of... Yeah, conveys yeah, the, the immensity. The, the, of, the of imagery, the, the detail is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, and that's a lot of work, even if you're operating with existing assets. This is a, a cover mock-up we did for a book that I wrote a couple of years ago that the publisher ended up turning down. And they designed what uh, I would have to say, let's see, mildly. It was a hideous cover uh, that did not work out well. I liked this one a lot better. Yep. And uh, I thought he did a wonderful job with it. This is a portrait of, of Armstrong that he had done before. And I just asked him to work it up into a cover comp. But I love the expression because you can kind of put anything in there you want. This is, again, part of the process of doing this kind of art. You know, if if Neil had been grimacing, that's one message. If he had been smiling broadly, like, oh, it's cool to be on the moon. That's another message. But this is very pensive and reflective. So we kind of read into it, whatever, whatever we bring to the story. This is Chris Kraft in mission control mode in old is his elder years. Um, I don't know the story behind this one. Maybe Jim will tell us, but I just loved, you did a series of these, Jim, where you took uh, some of the heroes of the, the space age and put them into modern settings. And uh, I just love the expression. Because I'm back. If you ever spent time talking to Chris Kraft, that was Chris Kraft, right? <laughs> Especially if you said, uh, what do you think of NASA this year? Uh, you, you got a lot of a lot of interesting feedback. Was this a commission? No, actually, this was um, unfortunately on uh, when he died, and so uh, I really wanted to do. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, it brought it up. I mean, I, I wanted to do something that was a, a, a salute to him, and I just just really liked. Um, there was a there was a photograph that was very similar to this that I used as part of the the uh, underlayment or the, the the sketching and uh but then i decided i he needed to have his old gear back on i liked i liked thinking of him as as you know running flights now and yeah. uh yeah, you know uh classic character uh, and i love his name christopher Col i didn't know his middle name was columbus yeah, is that something? Yeah. Um, Very apt for him, yes. Yeah. You mind if I go through a few more before I give you back? Sure, go story? ahead. This one we go. is a tearjerker. So this is Opportunity, it's Last Days, and a film of uh, the same general topic just came out, and I was a little distressed to see that they hadn't used your artwork in it, but they did do something fairly similar for the... Um, the uh, poster shot, so maybe they mm -hmm. took inspiration from your artwork. But I, I've loved this one, and I think there's another version that's further that where the camera's pulled back further, isn't there? Um, yeah, I think this is cropped a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but it really, I mean, I love the the low angle looking up and seeing the threatening clouds, and we know what's coming, which is the the dust storm that ended it. But also the fact that it's looking over its shoulder, like, oh my gosh, is there somewhere to get out of this? It's just really a touching, a touching illustration. I, I love yeah, it. and you, you you talk about a story behind something, and and there I am working on it. And one of the first things I thought was, he's really small, or she's really small, um, compared to some of the other other um, probes and uh, that drive around. And and then I thought, well, that's not right because that's my viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So I thought of it more from from his viewpoint, from. Um, you know, I mean, it, so I got this very low angle and, and, um, there's, there's no denying that there's a sense of eyes to it from the cameras. And that's, right. that's their apparent. I mean, just if you walk into the lab and see them sitting there, um, and, um, yeah, so it, it's kind of this 
yes, it's a it's a poignant story. And there's the Apollo 11 landing, um, the picture we didn't get, uh, even though you can see there on the side that the camera's deployed. Um, and I always say that to people that, that weren't around, or I guess everybody pretty much has seen the, the original uh, broadcast and the tapes, but the experience of, of watching them was a whole other experience. It, it, it was in weird, fuzzy black and white, and actually the picture started upside down, so we didn't even know what we were seeing. seeing. Well, so it was, it was a very over... spooky alien kind of thing. Yeah, it was. It wasn't this angle. It was like sort of over his shoulder, looking past the ladder shot. Right. So it was better than nothing. But this is what we all wanted to see, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This is great. This was another book cover candidate that uh, I got iced out on. And this is just I'm I'm I did a series of astronauts of the future, and knowing that the people who will be going to Mars, the people who will be going out into space, and generations and generations to come, um, you, you know they're they're going to be there. They're going to be real people. They're going to be real heroes. So I was imagining them um, in these somewhat futuristic settings. Um, that's another fun thing is I, I get, because I'm independent, I get to go out and imagine uh, as far out as a hundred years or even, even 200 years, two centuries. And so uh, I get to explore those possibilities. Uh, maybe that some of the folks in the industries or the government um, aren't encouraged to do. I, I get to do subject matter that that may not be relevant for them directly in their budgets and their time constraints. Um, one thing we need to remember is that the original um, space program, the space race, when it all began in the 60s and the late 50s, it was very big, exciting news. And so an awful lot of the, the imagery and the publicity really was being done by um, newspapers, magazines, television. It was being done for uh, the space program and, and also by people whose that was their big job. Now, yeah. now we're, our art is kind of being led a little bit by engineers and folks. It, we're, we're seeing pictures that are great in terms of telling detail but they aren't necessarily very compelling or uh stirring emotions in people and i think that's vital i think that that's something that we really need to have because this is a this is the great adventure um you know it, it comes and it goes and all kinds of things well, you know it, the space program is now part of our daily lives, which is what we wanted it to be, right? Mm -hmm. And and so, um, but the continuation of, uh, I was I was saying it's our greatest adventure, and it is because it will be never ending, and and we'll be going farther and farther for centuries to come, and and guess what? We all live in space already, so you know we might as well start start getting used to the neighborhood um you yeah okay this is my norman rock rockwell scene um somebody somebody was saying why don't we see some ordinary normal kinds of things in space so we got the ladies here at the at the tea uh the tea room at the space station waiting for the, the shuttle to come in and i hadn't noticed until just now she's holding a picture of buzz haven't you did you notice that no. yeah no yeah that's you know she's recounting her her early romantic uh, uh, encounters to to her her, her two uh, twin aunts who uh, okay. who are going on the trip with her, I guess, or something. <laughs> oh, that's not mine. That's not yours. But okay, well let's let's go. Out. Can I take the screen sure. back for a second? Yeah, let me just, if I may, make a quick point. I really needed a cover for the special feature we did on women getting into space careers and you came through like gangbusters on this one now this illustration was cut off at the waist as i recall and you very kindly painted in the rest of it for us which was right i love this cover and it did very well and it was our white cover yeah and and it's fun because it was about 
women in space and the different jobs. And, and so yeah. we realized too, that there's not just spacemen, astronauts. Um, there are all kinds of people who are vital. There's people that build the spacecraft. There's the people that work with, with, uh, human sciences and keeping people healthy and happy and alive. And, and all these people could be potentially in space at some point too. Right. Um, Okay, let me, uh, I'll give you back control. You want to go back to the, okay. And I think you have a story that goes with that cover. Oh, okay. Now, what do we got here? We got the, uh, okay, I'm going to stop sharing. I, we, we went back to the little Chihuahua in Christmas for a second there. Okay. Uh, you you want to you want to bring up that uh, that last cover? Or I can. Let me see. Let me yeah, see. I'm if not sure I have the. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have the shot that went with it, which was an extraordinary moment um, when you told me. Or I guess I sent that to you, right? Mm-hmm. We got that letter from that that girl's father. Oh yeah. Um, here here we go. Uh, we did this cover. Do you see that okay? I don't see anything yet. Oh, okay. You got to share. I got to share. Hold on. Okay. Um, Bert, uh, you know, if we get to the point where you feel like we need to be getting into Q&A, just uh, give me a slap at the back of the head and I'll... I'll switch over. Yeah, sounds good. Take about about another 10, take about about 10 minutes. Okay, it says at this end, I am sharing. Yes. Okay, now you see yes, it. Okay. Uh, okay, so we took one of those characters and expanded upon it and did this situation for one of your covers. And uh, <clears throat> I'd also have a, I do have a site and I hopefully can show some, some links at the end of all of this, uh, where you can buy my artwork as posters and, uh, t-shirts and mugs and even shower curtains, which is pretty cool. Uh, I, I, yeah, anyway, but, um, I, I got a fan letter from, um, a guy that, that had ordered a print of this for his daughter. And she was very much into the space program. And this was a big, you know, obviously a big inspiration. And, a, and, and I just, I love that picture. I mean, this is exactly what I want my pictures, my artist, my, what I do to, yeah. um, to complete. To, this is, uh, this is the best thing I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, that see. was that was a uh, that was a little bit of a dewy eye moment right there when I saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, um, really great. So, um, okay, so let's see here. Um, I'm looking at. Okay, well, let's just let me throw up some other pictures here. Here's some speculative work on. Um, uh, spacecraft that could travel the the solar system deep space uh spacecraft um and did we i think i overheard you were looking at cassini was that yeah, the picture yeah. okay it was that shot turned okay the and then here's some some speculation on mars missions um uh, again and, and what's interesting is the, the idea that we go we go with several uh, spacecraft of mm -hmm. a, a small fleet or flotilla. And, and here's something being uh, assembled in orbit uh, that's similar. Here we've got uh, ice mining on the moon. That was a lot of fun. And um, I, I think, did you ask for this or did I? I anyway, here's, here's Buzz, our, our favorite character. I love how he's, he's written in with his magic marker. Yeah. Uh, Buzz. <laughs> um, <laughs> And he's on Mars. I mean, so right. yeah, you know. well, he's on Mars as as we knew him at the time you did this piece of art. Yeah, right. Like, he's always on Mars. I mean, he's always he's so enthusiastic about about space oh, and about yeah. going places. Here's a fun cutaway type of thing. Everybody loves cutaways uh, right. of uh, a settlement on the moon that's built in inside of a lava tunnel, which is one of these um, you know giant uh, 
leftovers from from when there was volcanic activity um and if i can let me see here Uh, there we go okay now, now i can fly through here um let's go back to sorry are you seeing just a blurring bunch of pictures jumping around yeah here? i'm seeing all your thumbnails Ow! okay uh what you were talking about that okay so here we are back on the moon and right. and that's there's the uh another version of that tunnel after it's been sealed and pressurized right but before the the assets have been put in and like you said um uh, oh here we are after after a hard day's work and uh it's really been kind of um humanized and colonized and uh and that sort of thing and i had an argument with the client about the cat and i said okay fine no cats because they didn't they didn't want to you know extraneous biological problems uh, but at the same time, I said, boy, you never, you, you got to be sure you never get a pair of mice in any of your cargo. Uh, <laughs> um, what else we got here? I'm just flying through this. It, tell me if there's anything in particular you want. This was fun because this was about the long-term effects of, of uh, zero gravity on the human brain. And, and uh, it kind of like, will we go crazy or not? Uh, so I got a chance to play around with with that sort of thing uh it's it's fun to do the more far out speculative stuff and again because uh, you know it's all about the imagination uh this is always a favorite picture for rod and me oh, um and it, it just tells, tells the whole story right there right right uh, we had we we're talking a little bit about uh, your work at jpl and and how this is not my picture um the the uses and needs of illustration uh in the, in the uh, space program this is a, a a great example this is a, a very detailed uh very accurate picture but it isn't necessarily particularly interesting i mean i don't right. i'm not knocking the person or the whatever but see this is my version of the same spacecraft uh which is uh chandra right yeah mm -hmm. the x-ray telescope so you can see sort of the difference in how um storytelling i mean basically yeah uh with the light and and the feel and and uh kind of the also the angle which is kind of interesting um you know and and if i can the the other one had you think that okay cgi and it's made from engineering drawings and it should be totally accurate but actually computers do not always do a good job at that and and the perspectives are a bit off on it and to the point where it's um looks a whole lot longer than it probably probably is um well and you've told me you know for some of your artwork you've done something interesting which is you actually built miniatures or models and photographed them and then used them for the basis over right raw instead of using cgi which i thought was a, a very nice kind of return to the kind of visual effects work yeah and and it's it is i can play with them for one thing that's fun and and that's also helps my imagination mm -hmm. and um uh the b70 uh those pictures that's um that's a model uh i have an assistant who's or here here's a good pick another picture of the b70 okay so that's actually a, a scale model uh a kit build and um but you know i have some special techniques about taking pictures of them etc cetera, etc cetera. and i have a master model builder who puts them together for me and um so we come up and it's fun because there were only two built they were only flown experimentally and then one of them crashed now one of them is in the museum but i can go ahead and produce imagery that wasn't possible that can't be done any other way there's you know it, it, the pictures of them actually flying are kind of old school photography and not you know not very clear not very good um and so now we have a great illustration of of how they might have been used 
and uh, you know, at 75,000 feet, almost into space. Um, there's another great example of just, you know, playing around with, with the imagination. And I did a lot of work for a group that was uh, involved in what it was going to be like to live in outer space on a day-to-day -day basis. Escardia, right. Yeah. And Escardia was, you know, it's an idea, not, not hardware. And, and so it was also a wonderful license to go 100, 200 years out into the future. And because we will be there, it will happen. And um, there, uh, Rod, do you have any other special pictures you want to see here? Not that um, I can no, find them. No, I just wanted to but... ask you, and, and you can stay on that one if you want. And then I, I got to shut up and start asking other people's questions because I, uh, okay, right. I'll be, we'll be here all night. What are some of the elements or techniques that help you really bring life to your imagery? I mean, there's so many things. There's light, there's composition. There's the way you use people in them, which is a hard thing to do in a lot of space imagery. But uh, what's your secret? It's your secret <laughs> sauce. Well, I, I think you just listed them there. Um, I think most of all, I'm following this, even though I'm working in digital and working with a computer, I'm following the same techniques and, and methodology and maybe philosophy of old style painting. And, and, I study a lot of uh, work of painters and, and there's surprising similarities. Um, you know, paintings they were, they, at some point were, were a means of communication. They didn't have photography. They didn't have television. You had to do a painting of something, which is kind of amazing to think. But so when they were exploring the American West for the first time, they sent artists with Lewis and Clark. And so these guys could, could come back and do paintings of what they saw um and get other people excited about um exploring these strange new worlds um this is one of my favorites which is this is sophia the the flying mm -hmm. infrared telescope uh, we miss it already and um let's see why don't you do one more, and then uh, I'm going to take you through the flash round of questions. Oh, okay. Got a lot of. Them. Okay. Let's see. Let me go back to to Ad Astra, and uh, oh well, I was going to say one of the one of the biggest things I'm I'm into is uh, uh, trying to get people interested in planetary uh, planetary defense. This is our our asteroid from Chelyabinsk that that. that couple more degrees and and we would have had a very different kind of space program by now yeah. um that's about how big it was yeah. um and uh it would have changed uh been a very it, it was disturbing enough as it was but it would have been uh and and i like doing these things sort of uh and and i don't think it's any particularly small coincidence that we're getting all these sort of close-up views of these things now uh uh, what was the one that, that smacked uh, Jupiter seven times in a row or something pretty recently? Oh, Does anybody uh, remember that? Yeah, right. I mean, we just happened to have probes that were in the right place to get a ringside seat for that. Right. And uh, so anyway, I think you, you briefly looked at this. Uh, the, I, I, I actually, I did, but but we didn't comment on it. So I okay. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Well, I just really enjoyed it. it was, it's pure fantasy and speculation. Although I did have a scenario where this could be possible. And, and knowing Elon Musk, who knows? Because uh, there's a guy, that, one of the best things about him is he's, he's really into showbiz. And he's brought us uh, silver rockets with wings, which is, this is wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Straight okay. out of 1950, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, but it's real. It's real. And... Uh, and, and, you know, it reminds me of with, with the lunar lander in Apollo, um, we had no idea it was going to look like that until, yeah. it, until it came out. We thought it was going to be this entirely different sort of uh, a thing. And um, it was just such a delight and such a, uh, uh, a crazy moment when, when we saw that it was this weird thing, it looked like it was all put together with uh, you know, staples on aluminum foil and, and tape, which I guess it was. Uh, anyhow, uh, do you want to get to the questions now? I'll, I'll stop sharing.
Okay. Or maybe I'll leave the share up and then maybe I'll have some pictures for people's okay. questions. Does that sound right? So uh, first question, and these are not attributed. Um, were you naturally gifted as an artist when you started? Uh, I guess so. I mean, I, I, I've been drawing and, and playing uh, around with crayons, you know, all my life. Uh, and I, I come from, like I said, sort of my, my sister was an art professor. And my mother taught art in uh, in elementary school, and then went on to do a lot of stuff on her own. Um, so I, I'm not really sure what the term "naturally gifted" really means. It it I took that and I did a lot of work with it. I mean, it, in order to be really really good at something, you've got to do it all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the first things I tell people who are interested in in doing art or doing aerospace art is okay. You need to start doing this morning noon and night all the time and if if you don't have that kind of love for it then you, you probably should do something else next question is what kind of formal training did you receive as an artist and how did you get into the fashion industry oh the fact okay um well i went to columbia college of chicago and uh got a degree in photojournalism so that was that was that um and i did that because i was so absorbed in uh, photography, uh, you know, by that time that it just really made sense for me to, to go in and do that as a formal education. Um, and, um, getting into fashion, that was just sort of, a uh, a, a fun thing. Um, I was photographing people a lot and, um, it, it just seemed like a fun thing to do. And I just turned out to be really good at it. Uh, and I, you know, could relate very well to the models and um, work with them, you know, models that that's an art form in itself. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just a part about being uh, uh, pretty. Um, it's about, um, it's like dance kind of, I, I always tell people that it's sort of like, um, you know, it's, it's an art form in itself and, and there's a lot more to it. Uh, so I give them a lot of credit for for the stuff I did. I love the uh, the use of the rectangle of light in the background. That's really yeah. striking. And, and, and these are you know these are commonalities in art. Um, the the balance, the tones, uh, and and you know I I have clients that maybe want to change an image now and they want to put an extra spacecraft or they. Their, their mom's apple pie recipe in there or something. And, and you know. Talking about uh, anybody in particular, are we? No. Um, <laughs> but I, I try to say, you know, we're going to, as an engineer, we're going to break the symmetry here. We're going to break the balance and it's all going to fall over. Right. And, and you know, that that that's intuitive for me. And it's wonderful because see, it was also intuitive for her. I didn't really tell her to do that. So that's, that's part of the magic. Yeah. You know, that that's really a song. That's really a, a poem. Um, so and yes, next question. Pound on through. Uh, who are some of your major influences in your work as a space artist? You've mentioned a couple. But maybe McCall, but also, of course, uh, Stanley Kubrick's 2001, mm, which, which changed my life and, and a lot of people's lives when they saw it when, when I was young. Um, and uh, I'd have to say, uh, ironically, Norman Rockwell and Steven Spielberg, uh, mm -hmm. because they're such good storytellers, and and they 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 understand uh, people's souls. I mean, I guess that's what it comes down to. They understand they're just there. It's not it's it's not a big deal. It's it's kind of obvious. Um, but I can remember a, a scene in, in Close Encounters, uh, Spielberg's Close Encounters, or, there's several of them, but he just, all of a sudden, you're looking at something that just is so universally recognizable. You know, his, the pattern of, of le moonlight and leaves on the side of a house on a hot summer night. And, and boy, all of a sudden, you're just there. And um, so, uh, yeah, they're big inspirations for me. Um, like Ray Bradbury's writing. 
Yeah, um, exactly. And Ray Bradbury's writing. That's a very good point. Ray Bradbury's writing. Do you place any hidden ideas or concepts in your art? I guess they're asking if you have Easter eggs in there. Uh, no, not usually. Sometimes I'll, I'll put six of them in there just for fun. But but not like a meerkat on a space station, for instance. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I was I was going to show you this. Speaking of Bradbury, and th this is this is all much oh, yeah, to a, a, a an illustration that was done back in 1952 by Ron Wicks. It it was um this is mine, and Ron Wicks did his in 52 to illustrate uh, a Ray Bradbury a short story. It's only one one page long. Uh, the fun part about this is I took essentially the same ideas, uh, but I changed it all around. So, and so it's have a little boy, it's a little girl, and the father is actually my father, oh. and the the wife is actually um, a favorite girlfriend of mine from the old days. So that was, you know, I guess that's an Easter egg in a, in a sense. That is fun. Um. When we move off world to live and work in space, will our fashions look like what we saw in Barbarella? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't uh, think so. I don't know. Oh, well, we could go back to my hair. We should. Uh, yeah, no, I think oh, that. I hadn't seen this one before. Oh, you haven't seen this? Okay. No. Well, I've seen the other John Young shot, but not this one. Oh, okay. Well, to, to answer, okay, to answer your question, um, I, I suppose once we get into environments that are pretty well controlled and safe, um, some of the space stations or, or in the far, far future, maybe other planets outside of our solar system, uh, it, you know, that's an, I realized that about Mars. Mars is the only place we can really, only planet we can stand on uh, reasonably, you know, so that's got to be one of the places we go, right? Um, Oh, that's what I was looking for. Okay. Uh, okay. So, yeah, you know, that's a f somewhat realistic space suit, although I would say it's not really pressurized. Uh, yeah. Most of the times when we see actors in space suits, in fact, all the time, they aren't pressurized. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing much acting. Um, uh, so, uh, I guess we'll be able to wear what we want to wear when we're there's a big thing going on now about, and I don't know where they're at with it recently, but about uh, how to do a pressure suit, whether to have the uh, the uh, the balloon idea, which is what we use now, which is the pressure is contained right. inside the suit, or to actually make the suit like a you know a bandage and right. wrap us up, and that would you know that would look good for people who have uh, great figures. Um, I don't think I'd look good in that space suit. Me neither. Uh, I look like 10 that, pounds of sausage and a five pound skin. There you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, the, the, this portrait of John Young, which is based on you know, an official Navy portrait when he was young, uh, that was just, you know, playing around. And I really like John Young and, and he's one of my heroes. And I just was just screwing around, seeing what, what I could turn, you know, and turning it into modern art, so to speak. And, but it was it was real gratifying because I got contacted by his wife, oh. uh, his widow now, and and she requested a, a copy of it, oh, no so kidding. she could have a print done. Yeah, I I was That's real great. happy about that. Yeah, and she was real fun to talk with, and um, uh, so I was real honored. If, uh, I would bet. Do you mind if we go a little long tonight? A little longer than we had planned. I don't. Okay. Uh, let me uh, move on here. This is kind of a repeat question, but what previous artwork has influenced you the most regarding new ideas for space exploration? And I love this this coda. Is Star Wars artwork a trap? Ooh. Well, sort of. St Star Wars artwork a trap. Well, I mean, Star Wars was a was a big a big in visualizing outer space and space adventures. Uh, yeah. It, young people may not realize it, but it was a it, just like 2001 was a breakthrough. Um, Star Wars was kind of a breakthrough in terms of, yes, spacecraft can be dirty. Uh, they can be cranky and not work when you want them to, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and and yeah, well, it is kind of a trap because it, it, it's, um, it makes 
really cool looking spacecraft that aren't necessarily scientifically valid or right. engineering valid. Um, and, and it also really got us into sound in space because you can't have a good battle if, if you can't hear the explosions. So I guess that's, that's uh, uh, more, more like that. Um, you have any other questions? Yeah. Um, sorry about the noise in the background. It said, the question says, does art promote STEM? I guess I would say, can art promote STEM? And I don't think there's any, any doubt that it can. I mean, look what happened with that uh, letter you got from that little girl's father. That's STEM in action right there. I know. I shouldn't have shouldn't have took that drink of water that water stuff will kill you um what was the question is art promote stem yeah but i but i think you sort of showed i mean that that little yeah. girl's note to you was a stem moment right oh there. yeah it's it's a it's it's the, one of the best ways because we want to get people's we want to get kids imaginations and we also i mean frankly we're talking we're often talking down to children still we don't think we are but we are Mm. Um, and so, you know, I, I get really tired of these sort of obnoxious, um, you know, uh, pretty Peggy and her pink spaceship sort of thing. Um, and so, I mean, the stuff that really turned me on and probably contributed to me becoming a, a space artist was, was the totally realistic or grown up artwork, um, that I was talking about with McCall and bonus stall right. and those guys. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's a great way to do it. And I don't think we need to, I think they should be getting the best art, you know? So I'm going to, uh, go to some of the questions of the Q and a, I'll just kind of rock back and forth. Uh, -huh. uh, and I know how you can answer this one. Do you do any other art besides space art? And the answer is yes. And I bet you could call up something right now. Uh, well, yeah, let's see. Um, and you've done, of course, you've done all the stuff for Asgardia, which is uh, space art, but a little more fantasy oriented in some cases. Um, uh -huh. But a ton of, you've done just more traditional aerospace, some historical stuff. Oh, I yeah. Okay. Your, um, that that image you did of the dirigible core years ago, the black oh. and white one. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can find that real quick. Oh, boy. Um, While you're doing that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Have you done any art that didn't incorporate photos? Yeah, a lot of a lot of what I have done actually um, has no photography actually in it. Uh, it's all um, I don't know what you call it, but it, it's it's just a digital painting. Um, and uh, so that's kind of interesting because I've I've gone kind of uh the, the high the technology has taken me um farther and farther away from the traditional photography um in a studio with a camera with a subject um and i'm still i'm still playing around with my screen here trying to find the other okay while uh, you're doing that i have a really wonderful question uh-huh one that that I often ask myself when I'm working on various NASA jobs, art is critical for showing future potential. What would you tell scientists and engineers about how to use art to express their ideas? Well, that's a good, that's a really good question because yes, it it's a really good way to do that. I mean, it, how else are you going to explain something? Well, that's um, how we sold the Apollo program, right? Right. And it's how we, um, uh, Often I am seeing now that the uh, visual information, how do, I, how do I want to put this? Pictures aren't just for fun. They're an important part of, they're an important part of communicating, and, and in this case, engineering ideas, and, and in communicating them, in making them visual, that also brings up a new level of information. Um, just like if you want to, one of the things we're doing now is I am uh, doing some artwork that involves uh, uh, designs 
my own designs and, and they're not different really it's just let's see what a, a, a new kind of shuttle would look like or something like that right and my model builder he will go through a series of models and we will work with each one as we go and we will be figuring out you know okay that tail's not right and it needs more wing space so it's a it's a real and true tool uh for engineering and for science does that make sense was that the right reply <laughs> yeah and i think it, it plays in another question which has been asked by a few people which is uh you know what percentage of your work is is based on photographs and what percentage is based on illustration but i think that's so different from image to image that's a hard one to answer yeah it really merges together and and it always did i mean this picture initially was shot 35 years ago before photoshop i did some a little bit of embellishment mm. and got einstein's real uh, handwriting which was cool um so uh yeah they they're they're unless i'm being asked to go back and to do photography today um which i sometimes do um it's all pretty much mixed together um and and even with the other kinds of projects uh the the illustration part becomes an important part of it but i do a lot of portrait work still uh, mm -hmm. this is a composer um a guy who was a professor emeritus here at, at i i live right next to kent state university and this was on the occasion of his 90th birthday which was a lot of fun and mm -hmm. and photography is wonderful i mean it, it's it's such a great and 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 digital too and even looking at it like we are on a screen is mm -hmm. so much better than than uh, a lot of other ways because yeah. we can see what such detail and and in some ways we can see people better than if we were in person because you'd have to get pretty personal with him to get up that yeah. close um so those are interesting things uh somebody asked uh what kind of liability is potentially involved in using source photographs um that's a good question um usually what i'm doing is is the the imagery is is being changed and being uh, altered so many different ways so many different times I often say that there's there's not a pixel i haven't touched mm. that it's essentially like a painting uh and then um well stuff that comes from nasa directly i mean that's that's public public property because it's okay. funded by taxpayers that sort of thing so um and almost always I'm, I'm really usually cutting and pasting things to to such a degree that that there's not much of the original left and uh it's also well and then there's some stock photography rights i buy like the young lady we we're looking at right. and some of the other people um what inspired your interest in space? <laughs> well, I I was uh, I'm old enough that I was around during the during the start start of the space age, start of the space program, and it was a very exciting time, and it was very exciting stuff. And um, I don't know specifically; I just always was fascinated by it. Uh, and we were born at the right time. I mean, you and I. About I yeah, time. yeah, right. Yeah, you know, it was an amazing time to be alive when some of these Apollo flights went off as often as every 10 weeks on these uh -huh. missions of exploration and nothing like that has really happened since. I hope it does again soon, but yeah, there were optimistic times. There were there were times when um, uh, the future was an exciting place to go to to be. And and I hope that we can be be like that again. That's what I'm trying to do yeah essentially uh next up i'm sure this is one you get a lot do you have any advice for an artist who is interested in doing aerospace fine art and illustrations and i presume part of that might include how to make a living i uh <laughs> well you got to be willing to be poor for a while at least yeah it's um, like being a writer. yeah yeah it 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 depends you don't have to be poor to be an artist and there's a lot of arts that have a lot of money um 
but you do have to be really dedicated. You do have to be driven. You have to be really in love with it and then do it all the time. Be willing to learn and, and throw away bad ideas and, and find good new ideas um, and be willing to take criticism, which isn't easy. Um, but, you know, now I'm, I'm what, 67 or something. I'm just now beginning to, to be able to listen to people when they want to tell me something. Uh, <laughs> I hadn't noticed. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, just kidding. But I think that you, you just do it all the time. Do it, do it, uh, do it till you're the best. Well, and I don't know, I'm sure you don't either, how many hours you actually put into this, but every now and then when I go scrolling through your online portfolio, my jaw still drops at just the sheer volume of work you've done, most of which you just did because you wanted to. And that allows you to really express your vision. Unfair. Right, right. And, and I'm also that por portfolio idea, I'm selling myself, and I'm selling my vision. And, and to some extent, it's something that that isn't around as much as it used to be. There aren't illustrators that isn't as common as it used to be. Mm. Uh, it isn't, uh, it's been uh, cheaper, faster, uh, you know, CGI. A lot of budgets, I think, are going mainly for video. And then they're just doing the, the individual illustrations, maybe as an afterthought. Um, and, um, yeah, so you just, you got to love it. You got to do it all the time. Um, well, and you just mentioned something that, that leads me to the next question, which is, do you have any uh, prime gripes about what you see in contemporary aerospace artwork? Well, I know, uh, I know at least a couple. I, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to get into sour grapes and that kind of stuff. But I, I will have to say that often I'm amazed at how bad some of, the, some of the stuff like NASA is using. And, and I'm wondering how, why that's happening. Um, are they aware or am I being really picky or. No, you're not. Maybe they just don't know I'm out here. <laughs> Hire me. Uh, I will solve your problems. Um, and, and I have to, well, yeah, so I, I, I get frustrated because it is not doing as good of a job as it sh should be mm. in selling the programs. And I'm not getting my money's worth out of my taxes. Uh, I mean, when you think about the, uh, what was the, uh, the pr uh, project just recently where they picked up a little bit of an asteroid and they're going to bring it back? Oh, Osiris Rex? Ah, okay, thanks, because I couldn't find it here because I couldn't remember its name. It's hard to, uh, okay. Well, we, so. And we also ran into a similar situation with, uh, when I was doing the JPL book, I think in 2018, we had a story on the Europa, on a Europa lander, and you either had or kindly worked up an image, your idea of what it might look like, because we had the one stock NASA shot that looked like it was done with finger painting, is awful probably from engineering terms probably pretty accurate but yours had a lot more imagination and feeling and life to it uh -huh. and i wasn't able to at the end of the day close that deal but um they don't it, it, yeah i, I love what you did uh, it's it's been a little scary because once or twice i've i've gotten an inside dope from somebody and and basically their boss doesn't really see the difference and and that's okay I mean, that's not their job. And, and yeah. being an artist or enjoying all that stuff is not make me better than anybody else. It's just my, what I do. And so it's, it's probably in a lot of cases, they just don't have the budgets anymore for, or, or maybe the uh, emphasis on having people that are uh, doing a special job of, of collecting art and selling art and, and right. promoting promoting the uh, the projects here's a good here's a good example i was looking for with the osiris rex and right. the one here on the left is the actual uh, nasa uh, this is what you see if you look it up right. etc and gosh it it looks kind of bad i'm sorry uh so i i took the pretty much the exact same 
uh, tracing, etc. And I and I did this version here, which actually Goddard I think used it. And uh, but I, I look at that thing on the left and I say, well, th this pro project cost a billion dollars, and that's all we're going to get because we can't, you know, under no, most circumstances, people shoot this stuff in outer space and it's gone. Yeah. I mean, we, so even just the people that worked on it need, need something nicer than this. Um, and uh, so I guess I wish people would understand uh, the importance of pictures, the importance of art and, uh, and not be afraid of it um, because it's, Go ahead. We got about seven minutes. So let me just try and okay. get through the flash round here. Uh, can you describe any works of man interstellar ships that you are particularly proud of? Have you done any interstellars? No, because there aren't any interstellar spacecraft uh, yet. No. Um, okay. And it's the so, kind of question I get, which is, you know, that's great. Um, yeah, we're going to we're going to go there one way or another. Um, but I try to stay within the realm of uh, sort of possible or maybe possible, but okay. Um, but I have uh, speculated on, let's see, where's my, uh, the original Orion project, which was uh, atomic pulse um, uh, propulsion, which would be a real game changer, but for various reasons, we haven't seen that yet. That's, that's a uh, Orion Atomic Pulse spacecraft. Ah, uh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, Love yeah. It. And then I did the travel poster, uh, which is be because of what we're using. We're, we're going to have to launch her from some, so somewhere far out in the South Pacific where there isn't anybody. Right. Um, but uh, it, it literally ten thousand times the power. So that's. But uh, yes, I have been thinking about about looking maybe doing something that is uh interstellar spacecraft um that isn't that isn't an arc ship that takes 200 years to get there okay just a couple more here um do you attempt to display the proper appearance of constellations in the background no uh well to some degree um but generally no um I think a lot of times, uh, I, uh, yeah, it's not it's not real relevant. Um, I mean, there. I guess some people would care about that. Uh, what I do try to do is is give a a a meaningful background, give a meaningful feeling. Uh, one of the best parts of my this this. Uh, career that I've embarked on recently with doing aerospace illustrations is I got a, a fan letter from uh, Story Musgrave, the astronaut, uh, the guy who saved the Hubble, and uh, and he said, "You really get it. You you really know what it's like out there." And I that blew me away because I terrible. certainly haven't been out there. Um, so in and. and I'm not looking for, I guess the answer is I'm not looking for, for total accuracy. I'm looking for um, a sense of, of, this, of the dream, of the imagination, of the, the longing and the wanting to be there. Uh, and, uh, you know, if it, I, yeah. So I guess the constellation, proper angle, but I do, I do put a lot of thought into what space looks like. And, and that's an interesting thing too, because people have been observing lately, like trying to be totally realistic um, uh, that you can't see stars in space and you can't, the astronauts on the moon couldn't see stars. Well, right. the, the cameras couldn't record it because they couldn't record the difference between the lit areas and the very dark areas and stars, which even on the moon, relatively speaking, would be very dim. But the main thing is they couldn't see them because they had this blinding bright illuminated surface in front of them all the time. And they didn't have 10 minutes to just uh, go find a shadow by a rock and stare into space and let their eyes get accumulated. Uh, 
right. you know, it, it, it's just silly because certainly that you can see the stars and on certain pictures now from the ISS and using digital photography, we, we clearly see that the stars are there. Um, yeah. Okay. And the last question, and then I'm going to turn it back to Bert. Thank you very much for, for joining us is what is your favorite piece of your own artwork? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Which, which is your favorite child? Mr. Yeah, well, there's no way to really, really say that. Uh, but I, I certainly, I guess every artist has, it's interesting because every artist probably has their favorite picture and then what others uh, I think is a favorite picture or yeah. their, their favorites. And sometimes they don't coincide at all. Sometimes I look at it and it's like, Oh, you look that, like that. That was a, and, and we even hear that about old composers and stuff like that. Sure, Tchaikovsky uh, hated the eighteen twelve overture. For I really, I, I, uh, yeah, exactly. I really love the, uh, of course, the the picture of, um, the little girl. Yeah, well, anybody who's on here probably knows it well because we used it quite a bit especially in the roadmap to space because it is so evocative of what the nss is trying to do you know this girl was probably born in a space station it's a shirt sleeve environment uh -huh. and, uh, that kind of tells the whole story uh before i let let this go back to bert i just want to ask um where can people find you and reach out to you we had a couple of comments that were more you know do you do this kind of work or that kind of work where can people track you down if they need to message you directly Oh, uh, uh, they can, uh, you, you want my email? Uh, whatever you prefer. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, well, they can reach me usually at James Vaughn photo, uh, uh, at gmail.com. Just one word. Yeah. Okay. And your website is James Vaughn photo illustration.com. I think. Correct. Let me see here. Yeah. That's I've got some links up um okay yeah the website is jamesvonphoto.com is. um and let's see i'm on youtube and vimeo uh let's see youtube there we are and the link for that is you know basically youtube james vaughn photo or james vaughn space stuff uh and, and then we got, and, and these are videos, uh, these are animations, the different still photographs with some uh, music and, and fancy stuff. It's a, it's a favorite way I have of, of looking at my stuff. Uh, here's the Vimeo link. And, uh, and then we have uh, Fine Art America where you can buy uh, posters, uh, all kinds of fun stuff of, of, uh, many of my many of my pieces and Good. that's uh at fine art america including shower curtains including shower curtains yes right. and and phone cases and bags and all kinds of fun stuff all right well thank you very much for making time for us tonight i appreciate well it. thank you i'm sorry we went over and i'm i'm you know talking oh, no. really fast here trying to include everything but uh it's always a pleasure to have a chance to talk with you guys. And uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And Bert, thanks for hosting. Oh, always my pleasure. Thank you so much, Jim. Uh, it was great looking at all those visuals. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to go out and uh, purchase some. You know, we've got a new office there at the, the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. I think we need to get some artwork on the walls. <laughs> That's right. That's large. Big, big hint, prints. Hint. Big prints. We're a nonprofit. Hint, hint. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe something yes. mural sized would be nice. <laughs> uh, I, I see. I see. Larry has his hand up. Larry, can you ask one last question very fast? Uh, hey, Larry. You know, I, I really appreciate. Uh, uh, I really. I think uh, space art is great. But what, the things that you do, uh, uh, Jim, is uh, uh, we are we are we we want to talk about space settlement and the things that you do. With you know, it's not just a. Uh, People in spacesuits and uh, the hardware. <laughs> it's a, it's a certainly the little girl or the people, the uh, the old couple walking down the street in, in space. It, it it brings back the old Norman Rockwell feel to the whole thing. Uh huh. 
Uh, yeah, it makes you feel like you're home. We're gonna have yeah, we're gonna have lives in outer space, not not yes. just in, in yes. yeah. And uh well said. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that. And and also, yes, I have a lot of you know things that are involving yeah, settlements one, and and stuff like that. Yeah, one last question. When were you in Chicago? I was there from uh the early 70s through till uh the late 90s. Okay. I thought I might have saw some of your work because I, I worked for uh a uh uh what they call these what they call oh, yeah, I, I can't I'm trying to think what we call these people. Uh uh advertising? Uh, adver ad advertising, but <laughs> they we had a different word for it back then. Okay. But the thing is uh and uh, I I worked for them for about two years in the sixty six sixty seven. I talked. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, that's a little bit before my time there. Okay, well, very good. Thanks, Larry. And again, uh, Jim, thank you so much. We really enjoyed it. Great, great visuals. I think uh, looking at all the comments from the people in the chat, they they enjoyed it as well. So thank you again, and thank you, uh, Rod, for moderating. Uh, and uh, it was a really fast hour and a half. I know we went a little bit over everybody, so we thank you for staying with us. Uh, as always, I'd like to thank uh, Fred Becker, who does our tech for us and gets the messaging out. And of course, my colleague, Larry Ahern, uh, my co-creator uh, and uh, organizer of these great space forums. So uh, everybody, we will see you again. Uh, in two weeks when we have the students joining us, getting a perspective for those who want to start out and uh, have careers in space. So we look forward to uh, seeing you then. Everybody wishing you a great evening. For those in the next time zone, wishing you a great next day ahead. And of course, a, a, a great weekend uh, as well. So everybody, thank you so much. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. See you later, General. It was a privilege. Yep. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Good night. Night, everyone.